Welcome to another episode of the Effortless Swimming Podcast. This episode, we've got Trent Grimsey uh, on a video call. And Trent's an open water swimmer. He's an Australian team member. Uh, and most notably, he's recently broken the English Channel world record. So he's, he went six hours, 55 minutes, breaking the old record by uh, two minutes and 50 seconds. So um, we're going to chat to Trent about uh, the channel swim, but we're also going to talk to him about his training, uh, technique, how he avoids injuries doing so many Ks in the pool. Uh, we're going to talk about diet uh, and wetsuits and open water swimming in general. So welcome to the call, Trent. Hey, thank you very much and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Let's get into by start, starting with how you transitioned from pool swimming to open water swimming and why you made that move. Definitely. Um, look, I, I was a pool swimmer pretty much all my life until probably 2008 and um I think there was, uh, I swam the Olympic trials for the 1500 in 2008 and I placed third behind uh, Grant Hacken and Craig Stevens in the 1500. I, I actually swam under the A qualifying time, but they only took the top two there. So that was quite frustrating for me. And um, I guess after that, I just, um, I had a little bit of a break, maybe a month off and just reassess things and uh, marathon swimming had just become an Olympic sport. So uh, I, I was toying with the idea of, of making the switch from pool to, to open water swimming then and, and look, I thought, hey, I've got nothing to lose. I'll try it for 12 months. Um, if I don't like it, I can easily go back or if I like it, I'll just stay doing open water or, and, and marathon swimming. And look, that um, 2009 was, I guess, my first year of, of really swimming I was serious open water and um, I got some really, really good results. Um, I won some really big races overseas and I won a silver medal at World Champs in the 25K. So... I think it was probably after that that I decided marathon swimming was for me. And if you look at your um, your achievements or your achievements in races over the last couple of years, there's just it goes on for pages the amount of races that you've placed in. So, uh, what's your what's your motivation behind doing so many races when there's such big distances? Look, I I just hate not being the best at something. Um, I figure if I'm going to do something, why not just give it a hundred percent and just give it my all so I can be the best. Um, it's what motivates us to me is is wanting to be the best and, and knowing I've got people chasing me, wanting to try and knock me off. And you've definitely got that now with the English uh, Channel uh, world record. Can you tell us a little a bit about how that came about and what <coughs> what inspired you to set that goal of setting the Channel record? Oh, definitely. Look, I think it was like back in 2009, I, I won my silver medal at World Championships and um, it was the first time I'd ever swam that distance, 25 kilometres. And I was probably on the plane on the way home. I remember thinking, wow, this is like... I mean, I think um, like the longer the ultra marathons is probably probably my thing now, and um, I guess it's just the next step. Um, it's like every marathon swimmer's dream. It's not only to swim the English Channel, but to hold this record. So when I got home, I, I didn't really know much about the English Channel, so I, I googled as much information as I could about it. Then um, um, I found out you have to book a, a long time in advance if you want a good tide, a good pilot, um, a good spot in in the tide. So. Um, I remember I booked in 2009, then um, I booked it for September 2012, so only a couple of months ago. Um, and, I mean, I just continued on with all my normal races and probably 12 months out from when I was meant to swim the channel. That's when I really started to, um, I guess, knuckle down and, and swim swim longer kilometres, um, change my diet a little bit, tweak the small things I needed to tweak to, to swim a, a fast English channel. And- and so you uh, and so you set it three three years out, and then you got sick in two thousand and ten. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, and then so you came back from being sick, and is that when you started to focus on it, or was it sort of twelve months out? When when did you start to train for the channel? Yeah, yeah like solely solely for the English Channel was probably um, after World Championships in two thousand eleven. Um, kind of everything I did, every race I did, it was um, I did it knowing I was going to swim a, swim the English Channel in um, in September. I actually left Australia um, two months before I was swimming in this channel and I did a different marathon um, every every weekend in a different country for the eight weeks leading up to when I was swimming in this channel. And I think um, I did this to prepare my body because swimming, um, swimming a fast marathon is not like running. You can't just swim a one-off and expect to swim fast. So with swimming marathons, you need to do, you need to do quite a few. Um, your body adjusts to them. It adapts to them. And um, these marathons I did, most of them were in cold water. Uh, specifically to get my body ready for the channel. Mm. And so your your training schedule leading up to the channel was that uh, how many sessions in the in the pool were you doing a week 
or in the yeah, open water as well? Up, like six months out from the channel, I, I think I took it up to 11 sessions a week, um, three gym sessions and, and um, a hell of a lot of dry land. Um, I mean, it's it's all about fitness, really. Um, the English Channel, you just need to be as fit as you can and, and hope for a good day. And uh, and with your sessions, were they all aerobic based? And we, how many k's are you getting up to a week? Yeah, I was doing probably anywhere between eighty and ninety kilometers a week leading up to um, the channel. A uh, few probably bigger than ninety kilometers. Um, but yeah, most of it was aerobic based. We took a quite a few a few of the sprint sessions out because we obviously. Um, I mean, don't need <laughs> when I'm swimming. It's like seven hour race. I don't, obviously don't need those sprint sessions. So yeah, we took them out and, and changed them with some aerobic sessions. Yeah, and uh, and now, so what's your you're training for World Championships uh, next year? <laughs> yeah, that's that's my big goal for next year, World Champs. Um, I've obviously got a few um, few races before then. Like I've got the Australian Trials in February where they pick the team. So um, obviously I want to swim well there to 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 swim the 5k the 10k and the 25k so we qualify in february for the events we want to swim in uh in june yep yeah and so with that and with your training now is that training for the 10 or the 25k for the yeah well it's <laughs> swimming australia don't actually have a they don't swim a 25k at our nationals so it's uh it's a little bit ridiculous so i've changed my training to swim a fast 10k like since i got back from the channel um i had a little bit of a break and everything we've done now it's just to prepare to swim a fast 10k so we've put those sprint sessions back in we've apped another gym session a week and um um, i'm starting to trim down a lot more too so it's um at our australian nationals we do swim the 5k and the 10k then out of those people that make the team um you need top two both of those races and then um out of the people the four people that are in that team, um, they they give the twenty five k spot to those swimmers. Okay, yep. So it's all for the ten k. So, yeah. And now you're doing so many k's in the pool. How do you avoid injury? Um, how do I avoid injury? Um, look, I've just got a really good um, physiotherapist. I think <laughs> I see him every week. I get a massage every week too. So I uh, get a physio every week, massage every week, and I've got a personal trainer. We do. Um, at the moment, we're going through a strength phase, but it's really good. He makes sure I do all the machines, uh, all my weights properly, uh, proper technique and stuff like this. And um, to be honest, I've never had like any bad shoulders that have kept me from not swimming or, or anything like that. I've been really, uh, really fortunate with the uh, with injuries today. So uh, hopefully I can keep it that way. Yeah. yeah. And so with your technique, is that, what are the things that you focus on when you're in the pool? With my technique? Yeah. Um, Obviously, doing marathon swimming and stuff, it's it's good to be efficient. But uh, probably a lot of people that have seen me swim, I'm not I'm not super efficient. Um, I've got a pretty high stroke rate. Um, but it's, it's I think it's all about rhythm. To be honest, I'm a rhythmic swimmer. I swim fast when I've when I'm in good rhythm. I've got good rhythm, and um, so that's something I really work on. It's not so much stroke; it's more just my rhythm. And how do you go about finding the a good rhythm for yourself? Um, look, it's again, it's just something, just practice in training. Um, I mean, you obviously have the different rhythm for different speeds you're doing, and um, just just work on those different speeds in training. And do you, and with your kick, do you do you focus much on your kick being a marathon swimmer, or do you focus more on, on the pool? Or, or um, with my kick, we we do a little bit of kick in training. We don't do too much. Um, I'm I'm not a great kicker. I mean, I'm okay. I can uh, kick like 135 cycles, probably the fastest I can kick per hundred. Um, but I mean, we do a little bit, we, we do enough to, that if I ever come down to a sprint finish, I've got my kick there, but at the end of the day, it's, um, I don't think kicks, it's, it's not one of the most important things being a marathon swimmer. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so with your training sets, what would you say one of the, the toughest sets you've done in training is? One of the toughest sessions, um, remember it was leading up to the channel, um, it was probably four months before I was swimming in this channel, I did 100. 150s on one uh, 145 cycle, so that's 110 <laughs> pace. 15k at 110 pace, so oh that was not that was very tough. Well, I think that to- that's uh, that tops off um, the-, the toughest session that we've um, had on this podcast. That's for sure. Oh, okay. Um, speaking to Ollie Wilkinson, who's also done the channel and he's done the New York, um, the Manhattan swim. He, sure. Uh, he quite often does ten, ten one thousands, which is probably pretty common for marathon swimmers. But yeah, uh, that's uh, that's a quick pace, so that's awesome. Uh, and now in terms of uh, race strategy for the longer distance stuff, so for the 
you know, anything over 20 Ks? How do you pace one of those races? Yeah, look, all those races, like the longer races, it's all just tactics, to be honest. Um, it's it's kind of the first, if you're swimming a 20-kilometer race, the, the first, um, like, two-thirds of the race, it's just it's it's swimming easy, pretty much, just staying in the pack, seeing what the pack's going to do, seeing who's trying to break away. Um, then it's the last, probably, third of the race. It's just you just kind of go balls out and give it everything and um, uh, hope no one else can keep up with you. So, yeah, it's, these longer races, it's all... Um, all tactical. If someone breaks away, you, you try and see who it is. If it's someone you think's not going to be a threat, you don't bother chasing them. So, you know, the pack will catch them. But if it's someone who's going to be a threat, you've obviously got to work work hard to get them. So, look, every race is different, but it's it's most of the time it's it's two-thirds of the race is probably very easy. I could swim backstroke or breaststroke and still be in the pack. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's the last last kind of third of the race. It's, 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 uh, it's really fast. And so do you look to draft a lot of the time or do you sort of take it in turns if there's a big enough pack? Oh, it just depends. If, if the people that are in the pack, if they're, if they're your mates and they want to work with you, um, if they want to work together, yeah, we'll take turns. But if it's people you don't know and no, no one else is willing to pull their weight, I'm not going to pull my weight. I'll just sit at the back of the pack and let someone else do all the work. So it's a bit like cycling. They'll, uh, the pack Exactly go- like cycling, yeah. Yeah. And then what about the shorter stuff? So if you're doing two, three kilometer races, yeah. how, do you, how do you go about pacing those? Do you do a similar thing or you just go for it from the, from the start? Um, yeah, I mean, it depends on the course and conditions and those little races. They're from a favorite. I love seeing those two and three K races. Um, they're kind of my bread and butter up here in, in Queensland. Um, that's how I make most of my money on the weekends doing those type of races. But look, it's it's every race is different. It depends what competitors in the race. You can't swim if you know you got a competitor in the race and you know his weaknesses. You can't swim uh, to, to exploit his weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and one of those competitors is your your brother. You come from a, a pretty uh, amazing swimming family, um, so you, you obviously know your your brother's back to the front when you when you're racing those guys. Hmm. Uh, oh, and- yeah, definitely. But like, if I never win a race, I, I want my brothers to win a race. Well, while we're competitive, <laughs> I, I still like I, I get really excited when he swims well too. So it's not like it's not overly competitive with with my brothers and I. So you work as a team. That's uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty awesome. And now with your, with your diet, what uh, what's your sort of diet look like each day? What kind of foods do you avoid? What what do you like to eat? Um, look, honestly, like um, the amount of kilometers I swim, I can pretty much get away with eating anything. But um, to be honest, from, from Monday to Friday, I try and eat as healthy as I can. And then um, on the weekends, I just I just eat whatever I want normally. It's like a bit of takeaway, a lot of takeaway on the weekends. But Monday to Friday, it's, it's normally pretty healthy, like lots of vegetables, lots of fruit. Um, the, there'll be no real takeaway from Monday to Friday. But yeah, on the weekends, uh, it's... I, I, just, I can eat whatever I want. That's that's pretty much what I stick to. Yeah, that's good. Eat well during the week and then reward yourself on the weekend. Definitely, definitely. Um, and now with your wetsuits, what do you do? You wear sleeveless or sleeved, and what sort of things do you um, need in a wetsuit for you to for it to be comfortable for you? Yeah, look, I, I don't. I honestly don't do many races in a wetsuit, but um, this New Zealand series I've been doing, they're all wetsuit races. So um, I've had to start wearing a wetsuit for for these races and. Um, what well, I prefer to swim in a sleeveless wetsuit, I think it is a lot faster swimming with sleeves. Um, but look, it's, it's with a wetsuit, I think, um, honestly, just the more often you wear one, the more comfortable you're going to be in one. I, I absolutely hate wearing them. I, d- I know I don't wear them enough, but um, in, in training leading up to a race, I wear it maybe one or two times um, a couple of days before I go over and race in it. But um, yeah, if I had my way, um, no one would wear a wetsuit. Yeah. <laughs> Especially coming from Queensland, it's uh, not like down here in Melbourne where every race is pretty much with a wetsuit. Oh, yeah. No races in Queensland. Uh, you're allowed to wear a wetsuit. Yeah, it'd be much, much too hot. And uh, do you change your technique at all when you're wearing a wetsuit? Um, oh, I try not to. I Obviously, it's a lot higher in the water and, um, I mean, it makes me kick a little bit more because my legs aren't down so much, but uh, it's I, I haven't really noticed too much of a change, to be honest. Yep, yep. And well, you're you're a professional marathon swimmer, so you've got um, a number of um, sponsors that that help you out, um, so you can continue to train full time and and do those sorts of things. So, who are the the sponsors that help you out with that? 
Oh, definitely. Um, I, I, I hope I don't forget any now. <laughs> it's uh, Book Finnis, uh, my main um, swimsuit sponsor. Um, that they've been great to me this last twelve months. Um, Strathpine Sport and Physio Care, uh, the College of Health and Fitness, uh, Premax. Um, Putting you under the pump now. Yeah, <laughs> look. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be awkward if I do forget any. Um, look, they're, they're my main ones anyway. Oh, that's that's great. And then, uh, and where can people find out more about you and keep track of your progress with your swimming? Oh, definitely. Um, look, I've got a website. It's www.trentgrimsey.com. Uh, I put all my race results. I keep a blog. Um, I've got links to my Facebook and my Twitter on on that website as well. So yeah, log on to that. log on to my website, and you'll find everything. Yeah, and when when people go in there, they'll see the uh, the huge amount of races that you've done. And uh, it just keeps getting updated weekly. So that's uh, it's awesome the amount of races that you're doing. So um, yeah, so people that are listening to this, jump onto trentgrimsey.com because uh, there's a lot of good stuff on there. So thanks for uh, being on the podcast this week, Trent. And uh, best of luck in February for the national championships and then uh, in June uh, with the world champs. Okay, look, thanks very much. And, uh, and thanks for taking the time to talk to me. My pleasure. Thanks again. Yeah, bye.